So I recently bought the DJI mic and I've made a few videos on it already, but I haven't actually made a review or a kind of feedback video on exactly what I think about it. So I bought this mic kit with my own money and DJI are not sponsoring this video. So everything I'm going to tell you is my own opinion, free of any kind of obligations. So before we get into the actual review, it's probably worth pointing out one of the reasons why you might want to get a wireless microphone kit in the first place. And the main reason is so you can get farther away from the camera and still have good audio. For example, now if I had the microphone attached to the camera, it'd be really hard to pick up a good volume of my voice or I'd have to shout really loud just to get my point across. It'd also pick up any of the ambient sounds a lot more because we'd have to amplify the microphone signal in post-production just so you can hear me. At the moment, the microphone's right here. So no matter where I move, careful not to fall down there, you're still gonna be able to hear what I'm saying. So is this DJI mic kit any good? The answer is yes and no, or it depends on exactly what you wanna use it for and what your expectations are. So who is this microphone kit for? What it seems to be marketed towards is solo YouTubers or smaller productions. A lot of effort has been taken into the actual way the kit works from the little carry case, which can charge both the transmitters and the receiver, and also how quick and easy it is to use right out of the box. You're probably not gonna find this kit being used on high-end movie productions, however. There's a few reasons for that, which I'll get to in just a minute. Before I get into some of the things I don't like about this kit, let's talk about some of the good things. I've already mentioned how easy it is to get started. You literally take a transmitter out of the box and clip it onto you, then attach the receiver to the camera and plug the audio cable in, and you're pretty much good to go, with a few tweaking of settings, maybe. The next thing I really like about this system is the option to use a safety track feature. So basically what you can do is set a safety track to record a second channel at a lower volume than the one you've already set. So if, for example, you talk too loud or something loud happens and it clips the audio, you've still got that safety track that you can use in post-production. So for that last shot, I was standing, where are we? Way up there and the camera was way down there. So the next thing I really like about this wireless system is that it's got a decent range from the transmitter to the receiver. Normally you have the receiver plugged into the camera. So I did a test in another video and I got about 250 meters before things started to break up in the wireless transmission signal. So your mileage will vary depending on if there's anything in the way or if there's any radio interference at the time. There are some negatives to this wireless transmission system, which I'll get to in just a minute, but it's nice to know that you've got a decent range in ideal conditions. The other thing that I like about this system is the different attachment options for the transmitter that I'm wearing just at the minute. So these transmitters, they can attach magnetically or there's also a clip. Another super useful feature of this system is the fact you can record internally to these microphones or these wireless microphone transmitters. What that means is that if you do lose the wireless signal from the transmitter to the receiver, you can use the backup recording that's stored on this transmitter and kind of fix it in post. So what are some of the negatives about this system or things that I don't particularly like? Well, there's a few things you need to be aware of. First of all, if you turn your back and you're not close enough to the camera and you basically break line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver, you're gonna get audio dropouts. Like I say, it depends how close you are to the receiver and if there's any other interference around. But basically, if you're far enough away and you turn your back, you're gonna lose that wireless signal and your audio is gonna drop out. You can always revert to the backup recording on the transmitter here. The other thing you going to want to consider is the noise inherent in this system. What you want to be aware of is that sometimes you might get a little bit of background noise if you're using the receiver attached to the camera with the audio cable, whereas I've found that the internal audio recorded to the actual transmitters is a lot cleaner. For most of this video, you will have been listening to the wireless version and not the backup recording, so you get to make up your own mind. I think it's totally fine, especially for YouTube. There is a few other things to be aware of with this system, so it's great that you can attach lav mic to these transmitters so you know you can put the transmitter on the belt for example and then bring the lav mic up and come out of the lapel or something like that but one thing to be aware of is on the transmitters there's no locking mechanism to lock the wire from the lav mic into the transmitter so it's possible that that could come loose accidentally some other systems do have locking lav adapters another thing you need to be aware of with lavalier mics is some of them do introduce some kind of noise or interference Stuart and Alina did a great video on this I'll put a link to 
for that down in the description where they checked out loads of different lavalier mics for this system. The only other thing I really dislike about this system is the way that they've implemented the attachment for the hot shoe adapter to put on top of your camera. It's basically like a little hinge that you slot in, but for start the spring is really strong, but I'm thinking that might be so you can use it as a clip and attach it to a belt or something if you really needed to. But basically it feels really flimsy when you're attaching the adapter to the back of the receiver and then you have to bend it down and then push it in and it feels quite honestly a little bit under engineered for what it needs to be to the point where I might even try and super glue a hot shoe adapter to the bottom of the receiver just to have something that's a bit more robust and a bit more reliable. You can however fit the receiver forward facing or back facing which makes things a bit easier if you're talking to the camera like I am now and you just want to glance up and look at the levels. Hi whether you've got a DJI mic or you're thinking of getting one this video is for you. We're going to be looking at all of the features of this mic and how to set it up so you can get the very best out of it. So this is the bag that the microphone system comes in. Inside this bag we've got the charging case, you get a couple of these little wind muffs and you get an audio cable. Let's start off by taking a look at this charging case. To charge this case it's got a USB-C connector, you just plug that into a USB charger and if we open this up everything lights up to start with. It's telling us the battery of this transmitter, the battery level of this transmitter, and these 0.6 hours and 1.0 hours, they're not the battery life remaining, that's how much internal recording space is left. I'll get to internal recording later in this video. On the front here, you've got LEDs that tell you how much battery life is actually within this case. So the case has a battery in it, and also there's batteries in the transmitters and the receiver. So you can actually charge the DJI mic from the battery case itself, or you can plug USB cables into each of the three items separately if you want to charge them that way. You'll know when the case is full of charge because all of these lights will light up. So let's start off by looking at the receiver itself. Once you take it out of the box the display is going to change. You've got a power button, hold that in for a few seconds and it will turn on. We've got the USB-C port for charging and also for updating firmware. We've got the output sound port. This is what you connect up to your camera's microphone. And you've also got a headphone monitoring port. You can plug a pair of headphones into here if you want to monitor the audio that's being recorded. Let's take a look at the display itself. So the top part of the screen indicates the status of the receiver. At the top left it tells you your current recording mode. You can choose between stereo, mono and mono with safety track. We'll cover those in just a minute. This value tells you the current receiver gain setting. The receiver gain is how much the receiver itself amplifies the volume before it sends it along the cable to the camera. We currently don't have a headphone connected but if we did we'd see a little headphone icon here. Here we can see the strength of the signal between transmitter 1 and the receiver and here we can see the strength of the signal between transmitter 2 and the receiver. If you've only got one transmitter connected then you're only going to get one set of this information. Here you can see the battery level of the receiver itself. Then in the middle of the screen we've got status information about the transmitters themselves. Here you can see the transmitter gain for transmitter 1 and the transmitter gain for transmitter 2. The transmitter gain is the amplification that happens inside the transmitters themselves so whether you've got a lav mic connected or you're using the internal microphones it's how much that signal gets amplified before it gets sent to the receiver. Currently we've got this receiver set up for the mono with safety track feature, but we can change that. To operate the touch screen here, swipe down from the top to access the menu, and then you can swipe left and right to find the different items. We'll look at all of these in a second. You can choose the recording mode here. We're gonna change this from safety channel, and we're gonna change this to stereo. I'll explain what the different items are in just a minute. Swipe up from the bottom to go back a menu item, and up from the bottom to get back to the main screen. Now that we've got stereo recording mode selected, you can see the left and right indicators here. It's telling us that this transmitter is going to be output to the left side of the stereo signal and the audio from transmitter 2 will be output to the right hand side of the stereo signal. You can also see the battery status of both transmitters here. They're both currently fully charged. The bottom of the receiver screen shows you the real time volume information. So you can see as I'm talking, these volume meters are going up and down. If I bring one of these transmitters really close to my lips here and keep talking, notice that the bar is going yellow and also a bit red at the end. If you start to see red, that means that your volume settings are set too loud and your audio is gonna sound pretty terrible. So keep these bars in the green and occasionally popping into the yellow. So currently neither of these transmitters is muted which means that the audio is being transmitted from them to the receiver and will ultimately get recorded in the video file. You can mute the transmitter signal from either the transmitters or using the receiver. So to access the settings for one of the transmitters, if you've got two attached, you swipe up either from the bottom left or the bottom right, depending on which transmitter you want to change. So I'm gonna swipe up from the right bottom here 
And now we get access to Transmitter 2 settings. We can currently see that Transmitter 2 is recording internally to the internal memory. If I tap this, internal recording will stop. And if I tap that again, this transmitter is now recording internal audio again. If you want to mute one of these transmitters, tap the little speaker, you get a line through it. And if I just swipe down from the top, you can see now this icon is telling us that this transmitter is muted. And you can see we're getting no volume information on this bar. I just swipe up from the bottom right again, tap it again to unmute. If you want to access this transmitter settings, swipe up from the bottom left. This icon here tells you how much internal recording space is left on the transmitter. All right, let's take a look at all of the settings that we can access in this receiver. Swipe down from the top to the bottom, and then you can swipe left and right to access all of these things. The first setting that you can choose from is the recording mode. Currently, this is set to stereo. What this means is that each transmitter will send its signal to the receiver, and on the left side of the stereo signal in the video file, you'll get all of the audio from transmitter one and on the right side you'll get all of the audio from transmitter 2. If I tap this to change it, when we're using stereo mode we've got this additional setting. We can choose whether transmitter 1 goes on the left or the right. Currently transmitter 1's on the left, transmitter 2 on the right. If I tap this, it switches over. Now transmitter 1 will be on the right side of the stereo signal, transmitter 2 will be on the left. To change the recording mode, just tap this icon here. Now we've changed it to mono mode. Mono recording mode means that the audio from both transmitters is merged together in the receiver before it gets sent to the camera. Basically, what this means is that when you try and edit the video, you won't be able to edit the audio from transmitter one separate from the audio from transmitter two. Obviously, if you're only using one transmitter, this doesn't really matter. The third mode that you can choose is mono with safety track. This mode still records a stereo signal, but on one channel, you've got the normal volume and on the second channel you've got a copy of the audio but at a slightly lower volume. What that means is that if you've accidentally set the recording levels too high and the recording levels have overloaded or clipped you might be able to recover them in the editing process by switching to the safety track. One downside of this approach is it's still going to be a mono signal so if you're using both transmitters both of the audio from the transmitters is going to get merged before it gets sent to the camera. You won't be able to edit the left and right or transmitter one and two audio signals separately if you use this mode. This is the mode I use all the time when I'm just using one transmitter and recording myself because it gives you that extra level of safety. To get back to the main menu, swipe up from the bottom and that will go up one level. Let's take a look at this next item, receive again. Just tap that. The receiver gain is how much this receiver box amplifies the signal before it gets sent down the audio cable to the camera. Currently, this is set to plus 6 dB. Swipe to the left to reduce it. You can reduce it all the way down to negative 12 dB if the signal is overloading your camera. And on the other end of the spectrum, you can alter this all the way up to plus 12 dB if your signal in your camera is really, really quiet and you need to boost the volume. So if we set this to plus 9 dB, I'll just swipe up from the bottom a couple of times. You can see we've got this plus 9 now in the receiver display telling us the receiver gain setting. Let's just go back to the menu by swiping down. The next item you can change is the volume level for the headphones. We currently don't have any headphones connected, but you can increase or reduce the headphone volume there. The next set of settings is all to do with the transmitters. If I tap this and go into these settings, the first setting you can enable or disable is the low cut setting. It's currently off, but you can switch it to on if you want to. The low cut will reduce some of those lower level frequencies if you're finding that you've got a bit of an annoying low level rumble in the bottom. For example, sometimes people turn this on to get rid of air conditioning noise or that kind of traffic rumble, but I tend to turn it off all the time and I just use the EQ features of whatever editing program I'm using. The next setting for the transmitters is the transmitter gain. If I tap this, this is where we can set how much the audio is amplified in the transmitters themselves. Currently, both transmitters are being amplified by plus 4 dB. You can change this by tapping on one of them and altering it. And you can change these independently. This is useful if you've got these transmitters attached to two different people. You could have one person that talks very softly, so you might want to increase the transmitter gain for that person, but the other person might talk very loudly. So in that case, you'd want to reduce the transmitter gain for that person. The next option we can choose is this Rec Stop Lock, which is not very descriptive. If I just tap this, this enables you to lock the button on the transmitters that will turn off internal recording. This is a good feature to have turned on, and this will stop you from accidentally turning internal recording off by hitting the record button here. 
swipe across to the next feature. This is the auto recording option. Currently this is turned on. So what that means is when you turn on one of these receivers, it will automatically start recording to the internal memory. This is a great feature to have turned on all the time in my opinion, because it's always gonna make sure you're recording a backup version of the audio inside the transmitter. You can of course turn this off if you want to. Next setting is this vibration notification. And this basically allows you to turn off the vibrate feature on the transmitters. Notice for all of these transmitter settings, you can't actually change them independently for each transmitter. The settings apply to both transmitters. The next option is to change the LED brightness. You can see that you've got a red and green light on these transmitters. This setting allows you to alter the brightness. It's currently set to low brightness. Let's change this to high. You can see how they light up even more. Or if you find these distracting or you're wearing it under clothing and it's showing through, you might want to turn these off. Personally, I usually leave this on low as it's a good middle ground. That's all of the settings for the transmitters. To get back to the main menu, swipe up from the bottom and then we'll come across here to these general system settings. Let's go and have a look at these. Out of the box, the transmitters will come automatically linked with the receiver, but you can use this option if you want to manually relink them. For example, you might replace one of the transmitters and have to relink it. The next item you can change is this brightness setting. This changes the brightness on the receiver screen. Because I live in Australia where there's a lot of bright days, I usually leave this maxed out. You can change the language. You can change the date and time. This is the date and time that gets recorded into the internal audio files. You can reset the system by doing a factory reset, which I'm not going to do at the minute. And if you want to find out what version of firmware you've got installed, you can tap this. It'll tell you the firmware version of the receiver and also the firmware versions of transmitter one and transmitter two. You've also got this compliance information should you ever need it. So that's all of the settings you need to know about in the receiver. Let's take a look next at the transmitters. So this is the internal microphone built into the transmitter and this port you can attach an external microphone or a lav mic. The status indicator on this corner tells you whether or not you're connected to a receiver. It's currently solid green, that means we're connected. But if this is blinking slowly green, that means you're disconnected from the receiver. You'll actually notice that on the receiver display anyway. On this side, you've got a USB-C port. You can use this to transfer the internal recorded audio files from the transmitter to your computer and you can also use this to charge this independently of the case. If you hold down this power button it's going to turn off this transmitter. You can see now the display has changed here telling us we've only got the other transmitter transmitting and hold it down again to turn it back on. If you want to mute this transmitter just press this power button twice. You can see now the status indicator here is telling us that this transmitter is muted and to unmute double tap the power button again. The transmitters come with a magnet which you can use to attach to clothing and they also have this crocodile clip. This is the linking button which allows you to manually link this transmitter to a receiver and you also have this record button to start or stop internal recording. If I press this button Notice that nothing's actually happening in the receiver display. That's because we've got that record stop lock feature enabled. So I can't accidentally stop internal recording by pressing this button. This is the recording status LED. It's currently red. That means we're recording internal audio. But if I just double tap the power button again, notice that this is now pulsing on and off red. That means we're muted. And you can see once again in the receiver that we're not receiving any signal. You can either double tap the power button to unmute or swipe up from the bottom right and tap in the middle here to unmute. Now the LED goes back to solid red. Let's see next how to actually set this system up with a camera. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is have a look in this case and it comes with this little cold shoe mount. What you want to do is take the receiver and then you take this little clip fold this section out and then you slot it into this hole here. It can be a bit fiddly so just be gentle and take your time. And now this is a cold shoe mount which we can fit to a camera. So I'm just using this as a, a model camera. I'm going to fold out this cold shoe mount and then just gently slot it into the cold shoe. So if you have it this way around it means if you're filming yourself you can see the screen but if you're filming other people and you want to be able to see the display you simply just rotate it around and then fit it in backwards. Just change it back to the front. Once you've got the receiver attached to the camera, you can then use the supplied audio cable that comes with it. What you wanna do is take one end of this cable and attach it to the out port on the receiver. Don't accidentally attach this to the headphone port. So we'll go ahead and plug this in to the out port and then take the other end of this cable and plug it in to the microphone input on your camera. This audio cable is going to send the audio signal that's received from the transmitter down and into the camera. So the receiver itself doesn't record any internal audio. The only audio that the DJI mic system actually records itself 
are the audio files in each of the transmitter if you've turned on internal recording. You can now go and attach one of the transmitters to a person, for example. So you've got this magnet. To use this, you can basically, oops, slightly dodgy, put the microphone up inside your t-shirt and then clip the transmitter on like that. You can also do it the opposite way round, so you've got the transmitter hidden underneath your shirt. You can experiment with these different ways just to find what feels most comfortable or what produces the best sound quality for you. If you've got a shirt or something like that, you could also use the crocodile clips rather than the magnets. So once you've set up the receiver as you want it, you've attached the audio cable and you've got the transmitters attached to the people that you're recording, you can go and set the audio levels. The first step is to change the transmitter gain for each of the people that you're working with. So what I'm gonna do, just to simplify things, I'm just gonna turn off this other transmitter. So as I'm talking now, you can see this volume bar going up and down. This is the audio level that the receiver is receiving from this transmitter. You can see we're currently set to plus 12 transmitter gain. If I just speak into this, notice that it's going really red. So I'm just simulating what would happen here if you're recording a person that has a really loud pronounced voice. In this case, you can see if we get into the red, it's gonna sound terrible. So in that case, we're gonna to need to reduce transmitter gain. Swipe down from the top, go across to transmitter settings, go into transmitter gain. We're currently using transmitter two. So I'm gonna tap that. Now I'm gonna reduce that from plus 12. Let's try negative one. Swipe up. And I'll do the same test again. I'll get really close. Notice now that we're not actually getting into the red, we're just getting into that yellow occasionally. So that's a much better level for that kind of loud voice. Let me try and talk really quietly. So you probably can't even hear that. I was just really going low. See how we were really low down on that volume meter then for a quietly spoken person. In that case, you'd want to increase that transmit again. So you're getting most of the way up in the green here occasionally in the yellow. The next thing you're going to want to do is go into your camera audio recording settings. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to disable any automatic volume correction, any automatic wind noise reduction, and essentially you wanna go into whichever option allows you to set the recording volume manually. Start off by reducing the camera's recording volume to almost as low as it will go, and then in the receiver settings here, come into receive again and start to increase this. I suggest starting with something low so you don't overload your camera, and then just gradually increase that until you start to see a good signal in your camera's volume meter. Every camera's got a slightly different looking volume meter, but you want to be hitting mostly in the green, very occasionally in the yellow, or depending on what's marked on your camera's volume meter, aim for about the negative 12 dB mark as an average. You don't want to really ever see red in your camera's volume meter. If you follow this process, you should get the best possible signal quality with the lowest amount of possible noise. The final thing we're going to look at are these funny looking things here. These are the windshields that fit on to the transmitters. And all you do is you find the little circle inside here, slot it over the internal microphone, and then gently twist and you'll hear a gentle click. You wanna use these anytime you're filming outside and there's any wind, it'll just help cut down some of that wind noise. I've seen a few things online saying people aren't very happy about the sound quality or they think it sounds noisy. In this video, we're gonna put it to the test. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record this wireless signal that you're listening to now. I'm also gonna have a look at the internal recording on the transmitter itself and see if that's any quieter or any better quality. And then we'll also compare it to the microphone I've been using for a long time now, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, just to see if there's any difference in noise levels. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off this light because it has a fan in it. We don't want that to influence the results. Now I'm gonna sit very quietly to get a sample of the audio. So what we're gonna do now is swap out the DJI wireless mic for this, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and then you can listen to the difference in sound, and then we'll bring the files into the computer and we'll have a look at the noise levels, and we'll have a listen together and see which one sounds different or the best. All right then, so I've taken off the dead cat or the windshield, and now we're recording on the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So once again, I'm gonna turn off this light and then sit very still and quiet. Right, let's get this light back on. So I'm gonna stop recording, head into the computer, and then we'll see what we think. So what I did is I took those areas of silence and I brought them into Adobe Audition. So this first file here is the DJI recording wirelessly, and if I play this back, you can see down here that we've got a bit of noise. Just bear in mind that this experiment wasn't conducted in an, an, an echoic chamber or anything like that, but this should give you an idea for the practical use cases or practical application and whether this noise is actually a problem or not. Let's compare this to the road silence. Once again, let's hit play. And notice down here that there's pretty much no noise being registered. Interestingly, 
If we switch to the DJI microphone using the internal recording, so this is the recording that goes straight into the transmitters and play this back. You can see down here that it's basically the same as the Rode, there's basically no noise. You can actually do this a bit more scientifically. What I'm going to do here is click this scan button and you can see up here we've got a peak amplitude of negative 60.96 dB. If we compare this to the DJI wireless recording, we've got a peak amplitude of negative 55.5 dB. So that is basically this bit of noise down here. Let's have a look at the Rode and you can see here negative 59.94 peak amplitude. So this is basically roughly the same as the DJI internal recording at negative 60.96. So what does this actually mean for practical use? So the first thing I want to show you is this waveform here. Basically what I did is I applied my normal audio processing in Premiere Pro and then exported this. This is for the DJI recording wirelessly. What I want to start off by doing is play back this first section of silence and you can have a listen. You might want to use headphones for this. And you can see we've got some noise there. If we continue this playing, so what I'll do now is I'm going to swap over to the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and then do a little sample there. That's what it sounds like in practical use once you've got someone talking on top of the noise. And we can do the same thing for the Rode. Notice straight away here there's less noise in the waveform, but if we play this back, once we amplify and compress it and normalize it. Right, let's get this light back on. So I'm going to stop recording. That's what it sounds like. Just so you know, for the purposes of this test, I've been using everything that comes out of the box with the DJI mic kit, including the cable that goes from the receiver down into the camera. I haven't used any third party cables for this test. I also haven't dug into the details of perhaps using different cables to see if that improves the audio quality or messing around with different volume levels in the camera. But from this simple test, if you want the absolute best audio quality, it sounds like you might want to use the internal recording on the transmitters. But as you've heard for this entire video, I've been using using the wireless transmitter and the wireless audio. So if you think this sounds good enough, then just use that. To set up your DJI mic on your Sony camera, attach the hot shoe adapter to the DJI mic receiver and then carefully slide it onto your camera's hot shoe. Then take the audio cable that came with the DJI mic and plug one end into the out port on the receiver and the other end into your camera's microphone input port. Next, you're gonna to wanna to set your transmitter volume. This is also known as the transmitter gain. This is how much the transmitter will amplify the signal it receives from the microphone. Attach the transmitter to the person or wherever it's going to be used. If you're using both transmitters, do the same for the other one. Now talk normally and also what you think will be the loudest and watch the receiver. Make sure you have a strong signal. It should never hit the red, but it's okay to hit the yellow occasionally. But you also don't want it really, really low because that might mean more noise in the final audio. Basically, a strong green signal is what you're looking for here. You're going to want to set the recording mode using the menus on the receiver. If you're only using a single transmitter at a time, I'd suggest choosing the mono with safety track mode. This will give you a second channel of audio at a lower volume in case the main channel clips. And if you're using both transmitters at the same time, I'd suggest you choose the stereo mode. This will record each transmitter to a separate channel, one on the left and one on the right. This means you can edit them separately. Next, you need to change some camera settings. So go into your camera's menu settings, make sure any automatic wind noise cancellation is turned off if it's enabled, and also make sure any automatic volume gain control is turned off. You don't want the camera to be trying to increase lower volume levels because this will make your audio sound terrible. You can also achieve this kind of effect in post-production. So you want to set a manual recording volume level. Start at the lowest level, one above zero or no sound. Now you can set the receiver gain. This is how much the receiver on top of the camera will amplify the signal before sending it down the audio cable and into your camera. So get the people that are wearing the microphone to talk or if you're wearing it yourself, talk yourself, make sure you're not hitting the red in the camera, even if a person does an extra loud bit. It's okay to hit yellow very occasionally in the camera volume readout here. Aim to hit about the negative 12 dB level or a little bit over this for most of the normal talking volume. If it's too quiet, increase the receiver gain using the menu on the receiver. And if it's too loud, decrease the receiver gain setting. If it's still too
too quiet with the maximum receiver gain set, start to increase the camera level setting until you get around that negative 12 dB value. Whatever you do, don't increase the transmitter gain to do this because you've already set that at the start to be set for the person's voice volume level. If you increase it in the transmitter, it might overload and sound terrible. Depending on the Sony camera you're using and how good its built-in microphone preamps are, you may want to experiment with different receiver gain settings and also different volume levels in the camera to get the best possible signal with the least amount of noise. Now just check that the transmitter and receiver are turned on and wirelessly transmitting and then hit record on the camera. Can you hear me? Yep. So I had a few comments on a lot of my DJI mic videos so I thought I'd put together this kind of compilation video and answer some of your questions. Ugh. That's a very full can. So I've got a couple of questions from Rob Potter Golf, basically asking how you start and stop recording on their DJI mic. So does the DJI mic automatically start recording when you press record on the camera? The answer to that is no, at least not for the internal recording on the transmitter here. So basically, as long as you've got the transmitter turned on and the wireless receiver turned on and the cable connected from the receiver to the audio input on the camera, then if you just press record on the camera, it's already recording and transmitting the audio from here to there and down into the camera so you don't have to manually press record on the receiver unless you want to record on the internal recording on the transmitters and if you get the latest firmware update there's actually an auto start record feature so as soon as you pull the transmitter out of the box it's automatically going to start internal recording which is a great new feature i'll put a link to a video i did on how to update the firmware down in the description so Raul Fierro and JJ asked about locking the record button on the transmitters here. So basically what you don't want is if you've got these transmitters recording internally, you don't want to accidentally knock the record stop button and accidentally stop internal recording. So can you lock this? Yes, you can but you'll need to go and grab the latest firmware and that added a rec stop lock setting on the receiver. And you can turn that on, then you just start recording and the person who's wearing this can't actually stop the internal recording using this record start stop button. They can accidentally turn the power off if you hold that power button in, but as far as recording is concerned, you won't be able to stop it accidentally. Gravity Media Productions asked how you attach the receiver to the camera. Basically, you get this little hot shoe adapter and you slot that into the DJI mic receiver and then bend it down and then slot that into the hot shoe on your camera and that just mounts it on the top. It's a bit snug on the, the Sony. I'm not sure if that's because it's got the multifunction adapter on it. And once you've attached it to the hot shoe, you just plug in that audio cable from the receiver down into the camera audio input. So, oh, something asked if you can record both transmitters at the same time. The answer is yes. Uh, you need to choose what recording mode to use on the receiver if you're using two transmitters at the same time. So you can either have one transmitter go to the left stereo signal and one transmitter go to the right, or you can have them both mixed together in a single mono signal. Probably makes sense to actually use the stereo mode because then you can at least edit or separate out the, the two recordings from the two transmitters. Oh, and I should also point out that if you're using the internal recording on the transmitter, these record in mono only and not stereo. So once you plug these into the USB on your computer, you can access the files, but they'll be mono. Couple of questions from Wild About Watches and Kyle Q about the safety track. So the safety track feature gives you a second copy of the audio, but at a lower volume level. So basically that means if you set the volume level a bit too high or just for a small part of the audio, someone shouts and it overloads the audio, you've got that second lower volume level track. And it does this by having the main signal on one channel of the stereo signal and then the lower volume safety track on the other channel of the stereo signal. Just wanted to point out that the safety track feature only really applies to the audio that's coming out of the receiver down into the camera. It doesn't affect the internal recording on the transmitters. And another thing to think about is that if you're using two transmitters and you've got the safety track feature turned on, that means that the signal that comes from the receiver down the audio cable into the camera is going to be a mixed signal. What that means is you'll still get the safety track feature at a lower volume level, but because there's only two channels on a stereo signal, that means that both transmitters will be merged together so you won't be able to easily separate out if two people are talking at the same time on the transmitters. And I just made this other note for myself that if you're using the iPhone Lightning connector to connect this receiver up to an iPhone, you're going to get a mono signal so you're not going to be able to use the safety track with an iPhone.
Bob C and Haiti Creators asked about the internal transmitter recording levels. These are the transmitters and they have the internal recording memory and you can set the record level of these transmitters but you have to do it from the receiver. So basically once you've turned the transmitters on and the receiver on you can go into the menu on the receiver and choose the volume gain that these transmitters use from the internal microphone or if you plug in a lav mic for the internal gain from that lav mic and you can set a different gain level for each of the two transmitters that come in the box. Basically once you've set that next time you take the transmitter out of the box it will remember that gain setting or that volume microphone level setting and it will use that even if you're not using the receiver or anything else. So there's no physical microphone input level switch on the transmitters itself. WGM Wedding Videographers asked about the wireless signal dropping off. So as well as the internal recording on these things, there's also a wireless signal being sent from here to the receiver and then down the audio cable into the camera. And uh, some people have reported noise or interference when using this wireless connection. So I haven't actually experienced that interference yet. I did do a video when I tested out the range and once you get, you know, kind of 200, 250, 300 meters away, then the signal will start to drop out the wireless signal. But you can still record internally on this thing. And one thing I've seen is that some people have experienced this kind of dropping out of the signal or interference, but once they've updated the firmware, then the problem seems to have gone away. So you should possibly look at updating the firmware if you're having problems. A couple of comments relating to firmware while we're on the topic. Jose was having sound quality problems that he actually fixed by updating the firmware. And Mark Thomas asked about firmware updates failing. You can actually check what version of the firmware is installed on the receiver and on the transmitters by making sure the transmitters are turned on and transmitting. But then you go to the menu system on the receiver and you can check the currently installed firmware versions. And then you can just head over to the DJI website and see if you need to update them. I already did a video on how to update your firmware, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Arthur W asked about activation requirements. So there's no activation required of the DJI mic. Uh, you don't have to use an app to activate it or register it online or anything like that. You can basically just charge it up and then start using it right out of the box. And there's also no app that you need to use to actually set things up. So you don't really have to do anything, just open the lid of the box and if there's charge, start using it. I got asked about audio processing, post processing I should say, when you're editing the audio. So my audio processing workflow if you like is the same with the DJI mic as it is with my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and that's because I use the safety track on this and also on the Rode. I already did a full video on my individual workflow when it comes to audio. Once again I'll put a link to that down in the description. Holly Ente, I hope I'm saying that right, commented on the, the low cut feature that comes with the DJI mic. So basically you can turn this feature on and off and if you've turned it on, anything below 150 hertz frequency will be kind of filtered out. So this could be kind of rumble of traffic or air conditioner, that kind of low end, low frequency rumble you can cut out. As Holly Ente noticed, it might make your voice sound a bit muffled or a bit weird. So what I would actually suggest is leaving that feature turned off and then just using EQ in post to do any changes. Another question I've seen online is about the audio quality of the DJI mic system. This comment from Alistair represents a question that I've seen a few times. Basically, does the DJI mic sound noisy? So the audio for this entire video is being recorded using this mic and we've got no other microphones working at the minute. And I'm wirelessly transmitting from this to the receiver and then down into the camera. So you, you can basically make your own mind up whether or not the sound quality from this is good enough for your requirements. I'll be doing a future video on noise tests and maybe a comparison with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. GHOP Vlogs asked about a video I did on the internal recording features of these transmitters. So basically when you record internally on one of these transmitters, it will split the audio file up into individual 30 minute long audio files. So for example, if you recorded for an hour and a half, you'd get three 30 minute files and you just have to bring those three files into your video editing software and just align them up. So a few bonus quick fire questions. Can you connect a lav mic to the DJI mic transmitters? Yes, you can. Just bear in mind that there's no microphone locking connector on these transmitters. It's just like a plug-in pull-out. You might get interference or bad sound quality with some wired lav mics that you plug in. And Stuart and Alina did a great video on this where they bought a load of different lav mics and tested the interference or sound quality. So I'll put a link to their video down in the description too. What is the reception latency of the DJI mic receiver? DJI on their website say that there's approximately 15 millisecond, which is essentially 
negligible for the transmission from the transmitters to the receiver. Does DJI mic have SD card slots? No. The transmitters have eight gigabytes of built-in storage and that allows you to record up to 14 hours of 24-bit uncompressed audio on the transmitters. How long can you record on DJI mic transmitter? The maximum battery life on one transmitter is 5.5 hours. DJI say that you can use constant USB power because these things have a USB-C port on them. Once you fill up the storage, then it will start overwriting older files automatically after about 14 hours. Can I connect DJI mic to an iPhone? Yes, you can. So you can connect the receiver, which is on the camera at the minute, via the lightning adapter, and then just plug that into the bottom of the iPhone. Just a few things to bear in mind, stereo recording isn't supported on the iPhone when you're using the lightning adapter, and the DJI mic receiver supported from iPhone 8 and onwards. And it's also supported on non-iPhones, so if you want to see which phones actually are supported with this thing, I'll put a link in the description to DJI's support page or DJI's list of compatible phones. Does the DJI mic have XLR connectors? Nope. Uh, the receiver has a 3.5 millimeter TRS connector, and this is the audio output to the camera. It also has a 3.5 mil TRS connector to connect up some headphones. Can you adjust DJI mic headphone monitoring volume? Yes, you can. Basically, just go into the receiver settings and there's a little headphone icon. Tap on that and then you can select the, the headphone output volume. Does DJI mic support phantom power? No, it does not. So make sure you don't connect any phantom powered equipment to either the transmitters or the receiver. And the DJI user manual says that for the transmitters, quote, do not connect a microphone with a power supply of 24 volts or 48 volts. And also for the receiver, do not connect a device with a power supply or of 24 volts or 48 volts. So basically don't plug in any powered audio equipment. So each of these wireless transmitters that come with the DJI mic kit have built in internal memory and you can use these as a backup audio recording so for example if you're using this feature it's a great way to protect against things like your audio cable coming out of your camera or your audio settings in your camera being set too loud and your all your audio and your videos distorted and even if you lose connection between the wireless transmitter and the receiver you can use the backup audio on this thing to kind of save the day really the great thing about this feature as well is that you can even use the built-in audio recording feature in these transmitters. Even if you haven't got the receiver turned on, you can use them as standalone audio recorders. To start recording audio to the internal memory on a transmitter, press this button once, and to stop it, press it again. And when you're recording, this LED will light up red. If this light is pulsing red, it means that the audio is muted, so make sure this is solid red. You get about 14 hours of space on this internal recorder and if you fill up that 14 hours worth of recording storage space it'll start overwriting older files first and then keep going. So in theory you never have to actually delete any of the files off this thing as long as you transfer them to your computer of course. To get the audio files off the transmitter, plug in a USB-C cable and connect it to your computer. The audio files will show up, you don't need any special software to get them. The audio files you get are 24-bit WAV files so once you've copied them to your computer, you can just import them into your video editing software and then start to make use of them. One thing to be aware of is if you go over 30 minutes of recording, then the audio file will be split into multiple 30 minute long individual files that you'll have to kind of put together in editing. You can see in this video here, I lost wireless signal from the transmitter to the receiver when I went behind this rock. As a and the audio is dropping out. But because I was backup recording on the transmitter, I can just copy the audio file from the transmitter to my computer, import the audio file into the project, and then sync up the backup audio to match the video file. Now, if I play this back, you can see we've got the full audio again. If you're making use of this backup recording option, there's another great feature that's available as a firmware update from DJI. And this new feature basically makes backup recording even more bulletproof. Don't make these seven deadly mistakes if you wanna get the absolute best out of your DJI mic, like mistake number one, not setting up proper gain staging. Gain staging is where the audio gets amplified in the various parts of the system before it gets recorded into the final video file. In the DJI mic system, there's a few different places where gain or amplification of the signal can be applied. The first is in the transmitter itself, the second is in the receiver, and the third is in the actual camera body that you're connecting the receiver up to. First, you want to set the gain on the transmitter itself. This is gonna depend on how loud or how quiet the person is talking. Next, you wanna set the gain on the receiver itself.
12, this is how much the signal is going to be amplified before it gets sent down the cable to the camera. And third, you want to set up the volume or the gain that's being applied inside the camera itself. Mistake two is related to mistake one, and that's to set the transmitter level so high that it causes clipping of the audio signal. Everyone talks at different volumes, so depending on who you're attaching the transmitter to, you're going to want to set either a lower level or higher level of amplification or gain for the transmitter. Also keep in mind that some people have a very kind of monotone volume level, whereas some people will go loud and very quiet and loud and very quiet. So you just want to ask the person that you're attaching the microphone to to speak in a normal way and show you how high and how low their voice goes so you can set a correct transmitter level. Even if you're using the safety track feature of the DJI mic, if you set the transmitter level so high that the audio clips here, the safety track might not even be able to help you. While we're on the subject of safety tracks, mistake number three is not processing a safety track file into mono when you're editing your video. If you don't do this, then you're going to end up with quiet talking on the left side and loud talking on the right side, for example, which is gonna sound terrible. If you're using the safety track, all you need to do in your video editing software is to make sure you convert the stereo audio to mono and then choose either the left or right track, depending on whether or not you want the safety channel version. Mistake number four is really easy to do if you're in a rush and that's to accidentally plug in the audio cable into the headphone out socket and not the out socket on the receiver. If you do this, you're gonna end up with terrible sounding audio because the signal level is not gonna be correct for the camera. Mistake number five is to use mono mode on the receiver when you're using two transmitters on two separate people. If you use mono mode when you're using two transmitters, you're not going to be able to separate the audio out from person one and person two. That means that you're gonna get a single signal with all of the two voices mixed together automatically, and that means you're not going to be able to set volume levels for the two people differently when you're editing your video, and also apply things like EQ separately to each person. Mistake six is to not use the safety track feature when you're just using one transmitter on one person. The safety track feature gives you a second copy of the audio on one side of the stereo signal that's lower in volume than the normal level. That means if you accidentally overload or clip the audio, you can potentially save it by using the safety track lower level volume audio. While we're on the subject of safety nets, mistake seven is to not use backup internal recording on the transmitters and relying purely on the audio recorded in the camera. The DJI mic transmitters have internal memory so you can record internally to them as well as recording the audio into the video file using the camera. What that means is if you have a problem with the audio in the camera, for example, the audio cable coming out or the volume set too high or too low on the camera, you can use the backup audio recording recorded internally in these transmitters and then just sync up the audio to the video in post. Adding drone footage of you talking can make for a more interesting video. You can use the drone to get multiple locked off shots like this or get some movement in your shot with the drone moving and even cut from your drone camera straight to your main camera or vlogging camera with one smooth edit with no interruption in the flow of the voice. To get this to work, move your drone so it can see you and then start recording video on your drone. If you're also using an A camera or other cameras, make sure that they can also see you or that they're recording scratch audio to help you sync later in post. I'm currently recording internal audio to the DJI mic transmitter here, and I'm also wirelessly transmitting it to the camera and recording that into the video file to use as scratch audio. So make sure you're recording internally to the DJI microphone and then clap where your drone can see your hands clearly. The drone needs to see your hands coming together, otherwise it's gonna be harder to sync in post. Now just record the footage you want on all of the cameras and also the audio and bring it all into your editing software. Let's see how to sync it up. You can use the technique I'm about to show you in any video editing software. So for example, Final Cut or Resolve, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Premiere Pro, but you can follow the same steps in whatever video editing software you're using. So the first thing you wanna do is bring in your drone footage into the timeline and then just scrub through it and find that first clap. You might want to zoom in just to make things a bit easier. So once you've found the first clap, make sure the clip is selected here and just hit M on the keyboard to add a clip marker. You can see that there. Now we can bring in the internal audio from the DJI mic transmitter and I'll just zoom out a bit. What you want to look for are these peaks of really loud audio. This is usually going to be the claps and if we just play this back you can hear the clips. Zoom right into these, make sure the audio clip is selected, and once again hit M on the keyboard to add a marker to this audio clip. Now you can just zoom all the way out, trim the audio and video, and then just zoom in, find your marker in the audio or video, and drag it so it snaps to the marker in the audio or video. You can see now these two markers are lining up, and if we play this back, 
the audio is in sync with the drone video. Because I kept the drone video recording, the audio from the DJI internal recording will stay in sync with the rest of the video. So let's go to this first angle here. And just so you can see it on YouTube, we'll zoom in a bit. And if we play this back, adding drone footage of you talking. That's the first angle, but because I kept the video recording, I can just move it to a second angle and the audio will stay in sync. You can use the drone to get multiple. But what about if we have other cameras being used that we want to sync, like when we did the smooth cut from the drone to that vlogging shot? So here we've got the drone and DJI internal audio lined up already. Even cut from your drone to your Let's add the main camera in now. I'm just going to drag this over the top here. Because we had the DJI mic receiver plugged into the camera, we've got scratch audio in the video file that matches the audio in the transmitter. We can use this and get Premiere Pro to sync it for us. So to do the sync, select the main camera and then hold down shift and select the DJI internal audio. Now just right click, come up to synchronize, make sure audio is selected with track one and click OK. Premiere Pro will do its thing and try and line up the audio from the video and the audio track. The next thing you're going to want to do is disable or delete the main camera audio. I'm just going to hold Alt and select the audio here and just hit Shift E to disable the audio. And if we play this back and even cut from your drone to your A camera. Now it's just a case of trimming this main camera to cut where you want. And even cut straight from your drone to your A camera footage like this. I've got two quick tips for you if you want to try this out for yourself. First of all, if you have space on your drone, just keep the video recording for as long as you can because every time you stop and then restart video recording on the drone, you're going to have to go through the clap sync process. If you just keep it recording and move the drone to your second and third angles, it's going to make editing a bit quicker. The second tip is to be aware of the rotor noise. The closer the drone gets to you, the louder it's going to pick up on the the DJI mic recorder. So depending on the drone you've got, it might be less or more of a problem. Okay, so here we are out in the field and we're currently filming using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus attached to the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over to the DJI mic just so you can hear the difference in the sound quality. Okay, hopefully we're back. As I'm talking, I can see the level, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and strap this or click this onto myself. It actually looks like a pretty good level straight out of the box, kind of not peeking into any of the orange or red or overloading. So if I go and fit this here and I talk normally, I think we should be good to go. So there's a little clip, 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 clip. It's a little clip. Okay, it's on again. I don't know what I did then. I think I must have accidentally hit the power button. Be a bit, a bit more careful this time, maybe. Okay, let's make sure that's clicked on. Let's do a bit of a range test. What I'm gonna do, oh, I hope you can hear the difference in audio quality versus the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that we were on before. So what I'm gonna do, grab my phone and I'm gonna use an app just so I can track how far away from the camera and the transmitter and the receiver that I'm going. So let's start that up and we'll see what the range is like on this thing. DJI, uh, I think claimed 250 meters. So this is uh, open space. There's nothing obstructing uh, where I'm going to walk. So there'll be, we'll have line of sight between the camera and the transmitter and the receiver or vice versa. Okay, let's do this. Let's see how we go. I'm going to stop at every 50 kilometer increment and we'll try things out. I'm a bit nervous. Oh, nice rainbow. A bit nervous. Okay, I'm walking away. I'm walking away. Right. 0 0.01 kilometers. What's that? 20 meters. So I'm going to go 50 away. Currently got my back turned. Okay, so I'm 50 meters away now. Hopefully you can still hear me. If I turn around, I've got my back to the camera. Hopefully you can still hear me. And the front again at 50 meters. Let's keep going. Six D, 60, yep. <laughs> Walking backwards is hard work. 
Hello. Right, okay, 70 meters. Hope I press record. 80 meters. 90 meters. Yeah, this is hard work. And 100 meters. So this is me at 100 meters. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm gonna turn my back. So my body blocking line of sight to the receiver. And this is me at 100 meters facing the receiver now. All right, let's go to 150 meters. <laughs> okay, this is at 150 meters away from the receiver. Hopefully you can hear me still and turning around. Again, all right, let's go to 200 now. Come on, or oh, direct line of sight, 200 meters from the receiver. Let's get up to 250 now. This is 250 meters exactly from me to the receiver that's on the camera. And turn my back. Should we see him try and push 300 now and see what happens? I hope you can still see me all the way back there with a 20 meter lens. This is at 300 meters away from the camera and the receiver. I'm going to push it all the way to the end of this road. Push it real good. 50 meters away. Still got direct line of sight with no obstructions. I'm guessing you probably can't hear a word of what I'm saying now, but it would be cool if you could. Right, now for the long walk of shame or glory back to the car. I haven't been rained on, it's always a good thing. So I'm pretty sure I'm back in the 250 meters. It'll be interesting to see if this thing has automatically reconnected or refound the, uh, the receiver, because I'm definitely within the 250 meters now. And just, let me just record this on my phone. So that's how far I am away. To sync this in post obviously sorry for the shaky iphone video just thought it'd be interesting to see exactly how far away we can go hopefully we're still recording nice rainbow there almost back at the camera and it'll be interesting to see if the microphone or the transmitter i'm wearing has automatically resynced otherwise that whole walk would have been a bit of a waste of time Okay, moment of truth. Are we still recording? I think that we are. There we go. Oh, hello. Awesome. So I haven't obviously seen this video yet and I don't know at what point this microphone would have cut out and even if we were recording sound, I think we were, hopefully. And I can see on the camera sound levels here that the sound levels are pretty low, unfortunately so. All of that talking, I probably would have had to boost it in post, which is not really a fair comparison for sound quality. There's eight features that DJI could add to the next version of the DJI mic that would make it even better. So I've been using the DJI mic for several months now and I really enjoy it, but there's a few things that could be improved. Some of these could even be done as firmware updates to the current version, which would be pretty amazing. Oh, and if you're watching this DJI, you're welcome for the ideas. So the first new feature that could be implemented in version two of the DJI mic is the auto power on feature. So before I got the DJI mic, I was pretty much using a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus as the primary microphone on top of the camera. It's a great microphone and one of the cool features it has is that it detects when the camera turns on and then automatically turns on the microphone. At the minute the DJI mic receiver doesn't automatically turn on when you turn on the camera. The second feature I'd really like to see is the ability for these internal recorders on the transmitters to actually record a second safety track. At the minute you can use a safety track feature on the receiver but when you record internally on these transmitters it's a single mono file and there's no safety track to give you that sense of security if the main channel clips. At the minute when you connect the receiver to the camera if you're using the wireless transmission feature you have to use a little audio cable that goes from the receiver into the camera's microphone input. It'd be amazing on the next version if it would support some kind of Sony multi hot shoe adapter feature where we could just simply plug in the receiver and it would transmit the audio straight through the Sony hot shoe into the camera with no audio cables required that'd be so cool and while we're on the subject of hot shoes please 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 DJI make the hot shoe mounting adapter a bit stronger and a bit more sturdy I'm really scared every time I use it that it's gonna snap 
Another thing that would be so amazing to get in the internal recording in these transmitters is the ability to record 32-bit float audio. That would really help in protecting against overloaded volume signals. So it won't protect if you shout too loud and the microphone overloads, but it would mean basically you wouldn't really have to worry what the record level was in these internal microphones. 32-bit float will basically take care of that for you. So these transmitters have a built-in microphone, but you can also connect a lav mic to them. A feature that I'd really like to see on these transmitters is the ability to have locking lav mic connections. Just in case you're wiring this up with a lav mic and someone moves and the cable pops out of this transmitter, you're going to lose the audio signal. If DJI can't give us the Sony hot shoe adapter mount thing to get rid of that cable, what would be really nice is to also have some kind of locking cable on the sound output on the receiver just to help stop cables from being pulled out accidentally. So the eighth and final thing that DJI could improve on the next version of the DJI mic is to maybe improve the radio frequency interface that some people have reported. Personally, myself, I haven't actually had a problem with any kind of interference using it on a Sony a7S III, but some people have reported that when they've used it on certain cameras, they might hear a little bit of interference noise when recording wirelessly. So even without these eight features that I've just mentioned, the DJI mic is actually pretty feature packed. When you drag a video file into DaVinci Resolve that's using the DJI mic safety track, by default, you're gonna get a stereo audio channel. You can see this by the 2.0 here. That means we've got a left and a right audio track. If you want to see the actual audio in this clip, right click and check display individual audio channels. Now we can see the left and the right. You can see the left channel is louder, that's the regular volume, and the right channel here is the safety track at the lower volume level. So if you just want to use whatever's on the left track, you can right click the audio channel here and then come down to change track type two and choose mono. And now if we open up the mixer, Play this back. Might be recording a film or a commercial in a location that you can't. You can see down here, we just had a single mono channel. So what do you do if you actually want to use the safety track on the right channel and not the main audio on the left channel? If you don't already have loads of clips in the timeline, come up to all of the clips where you want to use the safety channel, right click, come down to clip attributes, and then come over to the audio tab. At the minute, this is telling us that this clip has stereo audio and we're outputting the channel one in the video file to the left track and channel two in the video file to the right track. What you can do is come up to this drop down and instead of stereo, choose mono. You can now choose whether to use the audio in the left or the right of the video file. Embedded channel one will give you the left side. So in our example, that's the regular volume and channel two will give you the safety track. Let's change this to channel two and click okay. Now this won't actually change any clips you've already got in the timeline here. If I play this back, check out the audio level here. In a location that you can't really control, or maybe you're- So we're getting about between negative 15 and negative 10 there. But if I drag this clip in a second time and play this back. In a film or a commercial in a location that you can't really control. Notice now we're getting the lower volume somewhere around the negative 20. If you've already got clips on the timeline, you can right click on the clip, choose clip attributes, and then follow the same approach. Change to mono, choose the track you want and click OK. Now both of these tracks can't really control, or maybe you're setting will play back really control, or maybe you're from the safety track audio on the right side of the stereo signal. So what do you do if you've got loads and loads of clips on the timeline, but you forgot to set the safety track at the source clip level, and perhaps they're all using stereo. I'll just remove these and reset this back to stereo. Drag that back in and display the individual audio channels. Rather than changing every single clip in the timeline, you can instead come to the Fairlight tab. What you can do is come over to this little plus button next to effects and click that, and then come down to tools and choose stereo fixer. This will add the stereo fixer effect. Now what you can do is either click this button to get only the left side of the audio playing on both sides of the output, or this button to get only the right hand side of the original audio playing on both sides. Let's see this in action in a location that you can't really control, or maybe you're setting up a YouTube filming space in a bedroom in a house, you're gonna usually come up. You can hear now we can either choose the main track or the safety track. If you want to actually work with it as a pure mono track, come up to the Fairlight menu, choose bus format, click add bus, make sure this is mono, and if you want to, give it a name, click okay, and just drag this across. To make some space, we'll turn off the meters, come down to bus outputs and remove it by clicking the cross and instead click the plus next to bus sends and choose DJI mic bus that we just created. 
click this middle button here to open up the settings and double click on this slider here to set it to zero. And now if we play this back, notice we don't get any sound. That's because we have to add a bus output to our DJI mic bus. Click the plus here and choose bus one to add the audio to the main output. Now if we play this back, look down here. Or maybe you're setting up a YouTube filming space in a bedroom in a... Now we've got a genuine mono track that we can work with.